evening, everyone, and welcome to the 10th annual John Paul II Memorial Arts and Culture event. Uh, we do this every year, right about the anniversary of the death of St. John Paul II, which is April 2nd. And we try to do a different kind of artistic event each year. Uh, I also want to publicly thank uh, the benefactors of this series. Uh, unfortunately, they are not able to be here with us this evening, but a very generous uh, family uh, enamored of John Paul II and what we do here at the Sales University uh, funds this series every year. So here's what we're going to do tonight. Okay, uh, I'm going to just do a quick little introduction of the playwright, and he will give a little introduction to the play overall. Then he's going to introduce the first scene, which will then be performed for you. John Paul II, I think it goes without saying, was one of the most important figures of perhaps the 20th century as a whole, or at least the latter part of the 20th century and early into the 21st century. He had a profound influence upon me, I know upon Father Daly and millions of people all around the globe, and especially now as saint, he's going to influence generations to come. And really what interested me the most was a relatively short period in his life when he was the age of pretty much everyone in this room. That is when he was about 19, 20, 21 years old, just having finished his freshman year at the Agalonian University in Krakow. And I was interested in the fact, both as, as a philosopher and a scholar, but I think more deeply as an artist, I was interested in the fact that at that age, his passion was to become an actor. And it was no dilettante's passion. He wanted to do this professionally. And it just fascinated me how he went from that aspiration on, to the point just three years later when he entered the underground seminary and began his studies to the priesthood. That period of time is what I wanted to write about. 1939 to 1942 in his life. And it was a tumultuous time because his vocational crisis and ultimate decision to enter the priesthood occurred during the crucible of war. The Nazis invaded Poland on September 1st, 1939, and that changed his life forever. And that invasion, of course, uh, took, uh, took place over six years. And during that time, Karol Wojtyla went through tremendous sufferings. I mean, his university career was virtually lost. He did a little bit of underground studies, but he, that was basically gone. He had to do backbreaking work in a limestone quarry, later in a chemical plant. His father died, the last remaining member of his immediate family. His mother had died when he was very young. His brother died. Uh, so, although he wasn't uh, a kid, he was an orphan uh, in the middle of the war. Um, he certainly knew people who died. Uh, it was, you know, a time of, in, of intense, intense suffering for him. But during the midst of all that, he didn't give up his ambition to be an actor. He and his friends took their theatrical activities underground. And you have to imagine them gathering in people's living rooms to put on plays. And they just didn't walk in the front doors of the apartment building in order to put on the play. You could get killed. So they had to sneak in, you know, in small groups. And they would huddle with the curtains drawn. And they would perform these plays with the intent of keeping alive the Catholic culture of their native Eventually, they formed a company. You may know the name, the Rhapsodic Theater, and they organized themselves a little more formally. And John Paul II continued to perform plays with them, even, I think, a little bit after the time that he was in the seminary. And he continued to write plays all the way until he was Bishop of Krakow many years later. So his love of the theater never died. How shall you spend these last few weeks before classes begin again? I shall spend them with what of late are my bosom companions, French irregular verbs. Mrs. Livage, who boards the stockies, is tutoring me in French. Why French, Lord? Well, 
so much great literature and criticism has been written in French, Father, it would be inexcusable of someone with my ambitions not to speak and read the language. And your ambitions, are they still for the theater? Yes, Father. Meaning, you aim to be a professional actor? I aim to try, at any rate. My friends and I have met with Julius Osterwa about doing some theater projects together. Osterwa thinks the main reason why Polish theater is not all it could be is that the translations of the classics that we use are so bad. He has this grand idea of making new Polish translations of works from Greek tragedy, Shakespeare, Ibsen, Chekhov. He even has me working on a translation of Oedipus the King, which is taxing the Greek I learned in Vodavice to its limits and beyond. Lolek finishes besting Father Thibelitz and begins besting himself in the cassock and surplus of an acolyte. Lolek, I was thinking this morning about the days when we were both in Vodavice, and in particular the day when Archbishop Sophia came to visit the boys' high school and you were asked to deliver the welcoming address. I was petrified by him. You did splendidly, as always. I don't think I ever told you the story Father Zacher told me on that day. Into a pool of light appear Archbishop Sapia and Father Zacher in close conversation. The Archbishop is patrician in mean and bearing. It seems the Archbishop was very in, was much impressed by your address, and that afterwards he said to Father Zacher, That's an intelligent boy. Oh, indeed, Your Excellency. He will certainly be the valedictorian of his class. Devout as well? Very much so, Your Excellency. Not a bad goaltender either. <laughs> Do you think we can make a priest out of him? I regret not, Your Excellency. He has plans to move this summer with his widower father to Krakow, where he will attend the Yagulonian. Study what? Uh, literature, Your Excellency. Philological studies. Uh, he has designs on becoming an actor. An actor? Uh, that is the reason he and his father are moving to Krakow, so the boy can pursue the studies that will prepare him for life on the stage. A pity. A pity, he said. The light goes down on Archbishop Sapia and Father Zacher. Lolek is silent as Father Thibowitz allows the story to sink in. You know, Lolek, archbishops have a way of seeing into them. Into their destinies, at least the holy ones. Like our good Archbishop Sapia, has it ever occurred to you that God might be calling you to a different kind of thing? Your devotion is impressive. You've been an acolyte since you were a boy. You have always been faithful to the sacraments and the sodalities. Your desire to be close to God is a gift he has given you, and perhaps a sign that he is preparing you to receive an even greater gift. The theater is not only vaudeville and reviews, Father. I believe the theater itself is a vocation. If you could hear Mieczysław de Plarczyk describe what it means to live for the theater, I think you would better understand what I want to accomplish with my life. For Dr. Kaplarczyk, for me and my friends, the theater is a way of truth, of perfection, of transforming lives. That is very noble, Roman. Don't get me wrong. I commend you on your ideal. Still, you know that only faith in God can be the genuine transformative power of souls. Of course, Father. But do we have to think of faith and art as though they exist in separate containers? Think of the works of Mickiewicz and Slowaki and Znorowicz. The greatness of the Polish Romanticism of the last century is that it brought the truth of our faith to bear upon dramatic literature. Join me in thanking our students. for me, so I'm going to add thanks to you for coming, and let us thank President McNair here for putting this all